Hey, it's me, Raika. Today we're going to have a look at the brand new season of the Tempore Rift. So this is a ladder climbing tower based event where you'll be able to fight off enemies, collect badges, upgrade your heroes and claim epic rewards. So when you begin this event, you'll start off by clicking on the Tempore Rift and challenging enemies. Now these enemies will go stronger and stronger every single time. And once you reach a certain points in the game, such as every 100, 200, and 300, the amount of multi-stage fights or enemies you have to defeat will increase as well. So you simply click challenge. Now you can choose a variety of heroes where you can select from different factions and different classes. So as we can see, I have set up my team over here. You can mix and match your team to your heart's desire. So this is the team that I will be using. There we go. I've set up my team. I'm happy. And now you can click begin battle. So now you can watch the battle or you can simply click on the quick battle feature. There we go. We have gotten victory and we can see the how our allies did. So you can see who did the most damage, healing and so forth. So once you've completed this, that was the first multi-stage battle, you can click on the second one as well. There we go, we claimed victory and we gained two, a couple of these badges. Now these badges can be used to upgrade your heroes. So as we can see, if I click on this badge, we can see its effects as well as its power that it can give to our allies. So as we can see, this hero already has a level 10 badge. However, the badge that I'll be equipping will reduce his power. So when I click on this, this hero over here will have an increase between level 7 to level 10 badge. So I simply click confirm and this hero's badge will be upgraded. Then we get two rewards. Now this will be one will be used to upgrade your temporal beacon and the other one will be used to upgrade your temporal crystal. So this is the continuum sequence. This is your uh, crystal upgrading material. And this is your continuum essence. This will be used to upgrade your hero's power. So each stage will give you seven and seven of each of the resource. And every single 20 floors or every 10 floors, you'll get 20 and 20 of each respective resource. Now, as I've currently moved one floor higher, I can select my next battle to, to do. So as we can see, I can have a look at the enemies as well. So you have to be careful sometimes. Some of the enemies are extremely powerful and you have to choose the enemies that are the easiest to you when fighting. So as we can see, this team looks relatively easy compared to this one over here. And you'll also interact with different portals. So from here, we can see two epic portals. Now, these enemies are very difficult. However, you can also get rare portals or blue portals where the enemies are slightly easier. You also get additional features such as a healing fountain, which can be great if your heroes are low on health. We can also get a twins beacon where they can either heal your allies, give you a couple 50% energy, or they can increase the level of one of your heroes badges. In addition, we also get resurrect heroes, so if you've lost a hero in battle, you can simply click on the Phoenix Reborn um, beacon and this will res resurrect a couple of heroes for you. There are also bosses as well that you have to fight every so 50 or 100 levels and they pose a significant challenge if you don't have the right heroes to be able to defeat these bosses. So I've selected a portal, I simply click challenge and I can click challenge and do battle. So now that you have passed 10 floors, you can go here, click on this little chest, and you can see all of the rewards that you can get. So starting from floor 10, you can go all the way to floor 600. And as you can see, there are a variety of epic rewards that you can get. So some of the rewards include a variety choice chest, which includes both engraving materials, twisted essence, signature item upgrades, PO coins, and a couple of amplifying and primordial emblems. Now, in addition to this, you can also get a couple of summon scrolls, gold, EXP, and dust, stargazing cards, 
Then we also have upgrade tokens, such as T4, T1 all the way to tier 4 upgrade tokens. Then we also get a couple of smaller rewards, such as 100 primordial emblems and 50 amplifying emblems every so couple of stages. In addition to this, we will also get a couple of time emblems. So once you've completed the 10 floors, you simply collect and this will appear in your mailbox. So you click and it will appear in your inventory. There we go. So those two continuum essence and the beacon essence, you can simply click on your temporal beacon as you can see here. And now you can see that you can upgrade one of these relics above. So these are essentially buffs that you can apply to your heroes and provide a different amount of stats depending on what you give them. So as we can see here, this is the support tree. So this is similar to your outer tree where you can upgrade specific branches for your heroes. So these are some of the stats that you can get. You can get health, attack, defense. However, in addition to this, you can get a significant amount of crit rating, crit damage amplification, resistance, insight, tenacity, and crit block rate. So what you have to do, you just simply click on the one that you would like to upgrade. There we go. And it increases the, its power level. So as we can see, the stats increased, and now my heroes will be stronger. So there are numerous amount of outer tree branches that you can focus on. However, I recommend focusing on three classes being supports, tanks, and then you have to choose depending on which heroes you have the most of, either being rangers or mages. So from, for me, my most invested heroes are mages, being Irons and my Odin. So I've used the mage tree as they're one of my most powerful heroes. As I do not have many powerful rangers, I've opted to not go for them. So as you can see, I've not put any points in warriors and rangers as I'm not using those heroes. So the three trees are tanks, mages, and supports that I would highly recommend. And then you can also look at investing in some of these other trees. Now, some of these trees are extremely powerful, such as the dimensional force, when an allied dimensional hero's energy is higher than 70%, their healing received is increased by 10%. Now, some of these powers are extremely powerful, and I would highly recommend going for them. Now, when you defeat a boss in the Temporal Rift, you'll get also these Crystalline Cores. Now, these Crystalline Cores you can use to upgrade some of these other relics, such as Undying Afterglow, where this will increase the amount of subsequent heroes being resurrected. So as you can see, also a fusing shield. So any excess healing or energy will be converted into a shield for your allies. This is extremely beneficial, especially when you encounter those healing or twins beacons. Then we have a couple of badge upgrades and various other things that can help you tremendously when progressing through this uh, event. So the next area that you can have a look at is your crystal. Now this is called the temporal armillary. So what this does, you'll be able to increase the amount of continuum sequence and essence that you generate per day. This is your AFK rewards. In addition, you'll be able to unlock more badges. So essentially your heroes will be able to use a variety of badges. Now these badges provide a variety of buffs and stats for your heroes. Now in addition, you can also increase the amount of level badges so currently as you can be seen here the highest badge that i can equip is level 10. so these badges you can mix and match to your heart's desire so these badges you can have a look as over here and they upgrade in power level for your hero so the badge at level 10 will be significantly weaker than the badge at level 15. now every so couple of days you'll be able to participate in the grand hunt now, this will be available in the next 6 days and 12 hours. And these are some of the rewards that you can get. So, each time you participate, you can get some of these rewards. So, you can get a couple of Poe coins and a couple of blue stones. And as you participate and do more damage to these specific bosses, the rewards increase more and more. So, as you can see, we can get a couple of summoning scrolls in addition to a couple of elemental shards. 
In addition, we can also get to fortune choice chests and some of the rules for this event. So, as you can see here, this hit boss will be available in a couple of days. You'll, in addition to be this, you'll be affected by this specific relic, where you can have a look at what it does to this boss. And every single couple of days, the boss will increase the amount of health and the amount of enemies will increase as well. So you'll have to mix and match and play around with your teams. So when you click on the Fountain of Time, this place will be able to give you the two resources that will benefit your Temple Rift Climbing rank. So you'll get your Crystal and your Beacon resources that you can use every single time you log into this event. Now this event will be available for the next 90 days and you'll be able to constantly keep progressing through this event as many times as you like in this specific event. So you have seven runs per week that you can do. So you can have a look here. Let's say all of your teams have been defeated. You can simply exit, collect a couple of resources, upgrade your hero's badges, and you can head on back in and keep on progressing through the ladder system. Let's say some of your heroes have been defeated. So let's say you click challenge, and you lost one of your heroes. So you've entered battle. There we go, you've lost a hero. You can click on rewind battle and you can simply keep on challenging the enemy until you get the specific outcome that you would like. In addition, if you severely have outpowered the enemies, you can click on auto battle. So this will skip battle animations. However, you can also select another feature where you can stop when the heroes have died. So you can click on activate, and now it will only end the auto battle feature if one of your heroes have died. So there we go, I've won the first battle. So now back onto the second battle. So let's have a look if I will win this specific match. There we go, I've won, and I'll keep on progressing onto the next stage. So it'll choose the easiest enemies, choose the healing portals, and will keep on progressing as long as you keep on winning these specific battles. There we go. And now I can click rewind and we can restart this event. 